Hello and welcome back to Everlasting Summer. Last time we were here, Alyssa got to experience the wonders of the mines. I think it was brilliant, really. I sat in the deck chair and looked up at the stars. This night they seemed to be brighter than usual. Perhaps they seem, seem so because not too long ago my only source of light was a dim flashlight and then that torch. The stars are brighter than a flashlight and obviously a torch. Most of the stars, I guess, are even brighter than the sun, but they're so far away. So, why have you come? I asked without even turning my head. Alyssa's footsteps could be heard well in advance in the silence of the night. Well, I... What did Shurik say? He said that he doesn't remember anything, that it's unscientific and nonsense like that. I think he really doesn't remember because of the, sh of the shock and stress. Who am I to say? I was in the same boat not too long ago. I'm still in it, though. Do I have amnesia? Well then, why did you come here? Then again, I guess I knew the answer. That's exactly why I hadn't gone to sleep. But, w but waited for her here. Well, I... Alyssa sat down next to me. Kind of wanted to thank you. After all, down there, you... That, you know. No problem. I said gently and leaned back. Well, alright then. She got up and was going to go. If you think that I'm angry with you, I'm not. Everything is okay. I didn't actually think that. Alyssa got worked up. Fine then. Okay. Yeah. Then... Just go already. Oh. <laughs> I'm just so used to them being, like, hostile, hostile toward each other that... That's my automatic reaction. Just go already. I said kindly and waved my hand. I'll go when I want to. So now you don't want to? I want to. Well... Is something preventing you from going? Moron. Melissa stamped her foot and quickly walked away from the, from the leader's cabin. She took a deep breath and stood up. My head was terribly dizzy from fatigue. Well, at least Olga Demetrina is sleeping already, and I won't have to explain anything. However, it wasn't that easy. Are you just sitting in the dark? The camp leader was standing in the middle of the room and was obviously preparing for a lengthy conversation. Or rather, for debriefing. Would you care to explain? What's the matter? In fact, you didn't mind when we were going to search for Shurik. And what ha- And what? Have you found him? It looks like she was more concerned about me coming back late than the fate of the lost pioneer. Yeah, we did. By the way, why are you standing here in the darkness? That was my question. What? I said why in the darkness? Because it's time to sleep. I couldn't agree with her more, though I was slightly surprised by such an abrupt mood swing. I just barely stumbled to my bed and collapsed on it without undressing. But still, Alyssa. Alyssa. I just didn't know what I should think of her. It wasn't because she'd been acting strange recently. No, on the contrary, all of her behavior was quite consistent and understandable. Even her returning to thank me. I thought of Alyssa much more than anything else that had happened tonight. Although, if you get down to it, there was nothing supernatural about it. Uncomfortable, sure. Frightening and even spine-chilling, sure. 
Something related to my arrival here, hardly. These thoughts put me to sleep. I always took good care of my health. And even better, even better care at the moments when I couldn't bear it anymore. And now I was able to walk and my feet weren't even hurting much. So my feet will heal up eventually while hunger drives the wolf from the wood. Surely the pioneers didn't finish up everything. At least a couple of sausages, eggs, or in the worst case, a few pieces of bread should be left. It was so deserted and quiet around the canteen that I even hesitated for a second. Isn't it here where every pioneer seeks his happiness three times a day, and some even more often? Isn't it an oasis of this heated summer desert? Isn't it a secret chemical lab studying how how types of meals unknown to science affect immature teenage bodies. Now this building looked more like a bastion of bastion abandoned by its defenders, a kind of La Rochelle left by the what the, the hug, uh, hug Huguenots was he's making references that I just don't know. Just get in and the ghosts of warriors who accepted hero a heroic death here will surround you. I feel so terrible. I'm just fumbling my way through sentences. The canteen looked the way it always did, though. It was just completely empty except for Miku, who was cleaning a table. Seeing that, I quickly turned around and tried to sneakily escape, but didn't manage to make it. Hi, Simeon. Did you come here to eat? You missed breakfast, didn't you? I mean, I didn't see you. You could even... You could have been there, but I didn't see you. It's good that you came anyway. Um, hi. Well, I... Yeah, I just came wondering if there's anything left, maybe. There's nothing left. You need to wait for lunch. You won't help me, by the way. Wait. You won't help me, by the way. What? Whatever. I'm cleaning up here. Before. What do you mean? She puffed off her lips and seemed offended. Somebody has to clean up. We do it in turns. You'll have to have your turn as well. Thanks, but no. Okay, got it. I was going to leave, but Miku still co couldn't stop. So will you help me? Sorry, Miku. I'm just not that into you right now. I gotta go. Okay, fine. It looks like I've upset Miku. That's the way the cookie crumbles. Leaving the canteen, I sat on the bench standing by the door and sighed tiredly. My feet were still hurting a bit, though not as bad as before, and there was still nothing in my stomach. There was quite a bit of time until lunch, so I decided to go for a walk. I picked a random direction, which could be explained by the single word forward. In the end, I found myself at the square. This wasn't a surprise, as the monuments of Genda appeared to be the central hub of this camp in a kind of... kilometer zero. I don't know why kilometer didn't quite register. I guess it's because of the spelling. I spell it E-R rather than R-E. I sat on the bench and started to think. Four days have passed and I haven't gotten even an inch closer to working out how I got here. It's true that quite a few things happened during this time, but almost every one of them can be explained logically after careful thinking. Every single one of them could have happened in normal life. Normal life. This term lost its original meaning to me here. Reactions to the environment, the actions and words of other people, or my own words. Indeed, none of this here is normal. In the past four days, my worldview had taken a series of painful punches to the stomach and uppercuts, which led to, led to it being, if not knocked out, then seriously knocked down. Sometimes I don't understand why I act one way or the other or say some things. 
shifty eyes. Actually, I do understand, but not straight away. Such afterthought, however, didn't help me to act differently, more sanely, and appropriate to the situation at all. Moments of truth happening to me are becoming more and more rare. If my only wish during the first day was getting out of here, and then now my main concerns were to find food, how to avoid lying up in the morning, and what to say to Olga Dmitrinov, Alyssa complains about me. And those things are truly important to me. And day after day, daily fuss like this overshadows the thoughts in my head about how how the world around me, together with this camp and these girls, are completely abnormal. But I can't do anything about about myself. Because I just forget. In the same way we breathe without thinking about it, I'm joining in the everyday life of the local inhabitants more and more without realizing it. I'm steadily becoming an average pioneer. No. This is wrong. I shouted loud and slapped my face a few times. All of a sudden the bell sounded, calling the pioneers for the lunch came from the sound speakers for lunch. I think in this area there's a bit more grammatical mistakes. Finally. I ran skipping along to the canteen, leaving my inspiring thoughts back at the square where they could sound interesting to Genda alone, and only if he was alive. The day has just started and I've gone through so many things already. But I did it and now have legitimate grounds to fill myself up. Which one did I choose last time? I think I stayed on guard? Uh, I don't know if this is going to make her hate us, but... My curiosity won. I struck at the right moment when Alyssa was looking away from me and snatched the book. Ouch! She screamed. What was that? What was that voice? In the following second, her face took on such an expression that it made me question my decision. It wasn't very smart, but you know what? If I'm about to die, at least I'll know what for. I held a cop I held a copy of Gone with the Wind in my hands. That was the same book that Lino was reading the evening on a bench. I was so astonished that I completely forgot about my imminent death. Is it interesting? Yeah. Alyssa answered without any enthusiasm, blushing. Okay then. I handed the book back to her. Alyssa threw it on the table and left the library quickly without looking at me. So human things aren't alien to her. In the end, she too is a girl. After a quick review of everything that just happened, I concluded that there's nothing wrong. There's nothing that's strange. Finally, Xenia's deep groan rang out, reach it, reaching each and every corner of the library. Find out what Alyssa and Lena are arguing about. I think after the library thing, they might be just discussing about the book that they just read. Only Lena and Alyssa stood out among all of the splendor. Well, of course, it was quite natural for Alyssa to be arguing with someone, someone like that. But hearing Lena talk in a raised voice, I came closer silently trying to understand what was going on. No, you listen to me. Think whatever you want. I've said everything. It looks serious. I tried as hard as I could to not attract any attention and look like I'm just standing there with no intention of listening in on them. There's nothing to think about. Everything is clear as day. Don't try to wind me up around your little finger like that. I know you too well. Well, of course you know everything. Then why won't you tell him yourself? Lena was getting angry. That alone was really weird, even considering that I didn't know... I didn't know what they were even arguing about. That's none of your business. Alyssa snorted, turned around, and her eyes met mine. A second later, Lena gave me a look as well. The girl stood there in confusion for some time. I'm not eavesdropping. I don't know. You're... 
eavesdropping? No. I'm just standing around. Me? Oh, no. I'm just passing by to go talk to whoever else is around this area. I put on the best smile I had, but it didn't seem to help much. It just made me look more suspicious. By the way, today he was he was peeping at me. Alyssa gave a malicious smile. Lena looked at me questioningly. First of all, why would she believe this devious fox stories? Second of all, yeah, I did. <laughs> I didn't peep. You know quite well that it was an accident. Oyana should be the one to blame. Sure it was. Tell that to the cops. What cops? There's nobody else here. It's just pioneers living their life in the forest. Seems like my excuse was not working. Did you like my boobs? No. A shiver ran up my spine. Is that... true? Lena looked at me imploringly. Well, you see, it was an accident. I didn't see anything there. There's just nothing to look at. You didn't? Well, I'll show you again. Alyssa cried in anger. Well, Jesus. I didn't know what to say. No matter what I said, I was going to get in trouble. You see, I told you. N no. Lena just started to mumble and rushed away a moment later. Wait, what happened? I shouted after her. You see what you did? That girl's upset now. She gave a spiteful smile. First of all, it wasn't me who upset her. Second, I don't have any idea what you two were arguing about. I was running out of patience. Why should I tell you? It seemed that she thought that our talk was over and was about to leave. I grabbed her hand abruptly. Alyssa glanced at me in fear but didn't say anything. It's so weird when she does, like, the, the huge extra anime eyes. I was angry at that moment, really angry. First, I was wildly enraged that Lena was upset because of me, even though I was actually kind of guilty. Second, I was enraged by Alyssa's insolence. Third, I was so tired that I was about to lose my temper at the smallest thing. Happy now? I hissed, pointing into the darkness where Lena had run off. You only seem to have the guts to bomb memorials and hurt innocent girls. She looked frightened, saddened, and confused at the same time. She herself could hurt anyone. You just don't know her. The only truth here is that I don't know her too well, but I'm absolutely positive that she wouldn't hurt anyone. That's your job. We stood in silence for some time. I held Alyssa's hand and didn't know what to, what to do next. The solution dawned upon me all by itself. You have to go and apologize. Why the hell should I? Alyssa tried to act as arrogant as usual, but it wasn't going to work this time, especially with her face looking like that. Because I said so. I refused to hear any objections and dragged her to the side of the bonfire. Being fair. Oh, good to met you. I'm sorry. We have some urgent business to deal with, so we have to leave early. The guidance officer tried to object, but I didn't listen to headed after Lena pulling Alyssa along with me. After some time, I released her hand. Any objections? All the pride and arrogance had left Alyssa's face long ago. If you want me to come with you, I will, but I have nothing to apologize for. I told her the truth. We'll see about that, then. I cut her short. We'd been walking in silence until we entered the camp. We came to the square and I asked Alyssa, Where do we go next? How should I know? And who said that they know Lena well? Was it me? Alyssa hesitated. Well, she should be at the island. She often goes there when she wants to be alone. Excellent. We headed to the pier. Is this the Strawberry Island? 
And I came down on the camp while I searched for paddles and pottered over, pottered around with the ropes. One boat was actually missing. Okay, today's your lucky day. You get to do several killer exercises that will build up your biceps, triceps, and other arm muscles. I said sarcastically. Are you serious? Alyssa cast a fearful glance at me. Well, perhaps that was a little too rough. Even for her. Alright, I won't make you row, of course. That hardly sounded confident. Swinging the paddles appeared to be much harder this time. Well, that's not surprising considering that today I must have already filled my annual rowing quota. I stopped in the middle of the river to catch my breath. The camp was covered by night. A trivial and ordinary night. It was one of those nights when the dark sky, stars, and crescent moon didn't make you feel anything special, and chirping crickets and twitting, twittering birds sounded like they were doing a dull jo routine job, rather than performing any otherwise exciting no nocturne. I was staring into the darkness trying to make out the shadowy island. How did you get to know her? Alyssa shivered a little. We grew up together. She entered slowly after some hesitation. And ended up at the same pioneer camp. What a fabulous coincidence. All these questions, mysterious, mysteries and fears that had been so well hidden so far suddenly spawned in my head. Damn, I could just throw her out the boat and drown her right here and now. Jeez. I can demand answers. Although, it could be dangerous unless I'm sure that I know what I'm doing. He's just thinking up of a murder plan. But I, but still, I thought that this time I was playing with the white pieces so I could make the first move and not just parry the blows of the opponent. So what kind of camp is this? Alyssa stared at me blankly. Where are we? Why am I here? She kept silent. Answer me, I shouted. Hey, what's wrong with you? If you want me to apologize to Lena, I will. That's when I realized how stupid I was acting, to say the least. She could simply be uninvolved in all that stuff. And what's more? One can't lie that convincingly. Alyssa's fearful expression was yet another reason to, be, to believe her. Sorry. That was all I was able to say at the moment. Yet I wanted to keep my advantage. The last few meters are really tough. Ooh, is this gonna lead to scary stuff? Exhausted, I got out of the boat and lay on the cold ground. Alyssa stood nearby, staring at me. I thought she was about to goad me into goad me or utter some barb witticism, but since she remained silent, I assumed she was still shocked or something. Even though it was rather dark here, it would be easier to hide in my old flat than on this tiny island. Furthermore, Lena must have already heard us as we were closing, as we were crossing the river. So by now, it's already too late to ask Alyssa any more questions, even though I still had some. Listen. I look at her, but saw nothing. It was dark night, and I didn't have cat's eyes. I don't know why we didn't bring a flashlight, but whatevs. Well, when we find Lena, you're gonna tell her you never wanted to hurt her feelings and everything that happened in the morning was nothing but a misunderstanding, okay? My voice didn't sound as confident as it did a couple minutes ago, but confident enough. Although Alyssa said nothing, it was clear by the look on her face that she agreed. I stood up and we went off to find Lena. Her boat was tied to a snag on the far side of the island. It's very clever of her. One wouldn't see the boat from afar. I mumbled. Well, that means she's somewhere in the trees. Let's find her. I headed into the grove, but Alyssa stood still. What's up? I thought we discussed everything already. Er, it's not that. It's just that. It's dark in there. I had to strain my eyes to make out her face. The grove is smaller than my grandmother's daisy garden. What is there to be afraid of? Alyssa didn't answer. Lena, that's what's to be afraid of? 
If you want to know what I'm thinking, I would gladly just leave you here. I never know what trick you're up to. Well, she came very close to me. Let's go like this. She took my hand. It's like the mind's all over again. I hadn't expected this outcome. My cheeks turned red and hot, my breath was my breath was taken away, and I could barely say anything. The whole situation didn't favor conversation, which was probably for the best, since I doubt I would be able to say anything smart. Slowly, we headed to the grove. In a couple of moments, I regained some control of myself. Come on, there's nothing to be afraid of. We came here during the day gathering some strawberries, no big deal, just a normal birch grove. It's really nice here during the day. I added after a short pause. Yeah, but it's not daytime right now, it's nighttime. Alyssa didn't look at me, she was staring somewhere in the distance. Well, it's up to you, after all. A few moments later, she pointed somewhere in front of us. There she is. I peered into the darkness, but could barely see anything. When we came closer, we saw Lena sitting beside a tree. She was crying. Why have you come here? She asked tearfully. And you? She looked at Alyssa, but didn't finish the sentence. That moment, Alyssa released my hand. Well, you see... I just wanted to apologize for being somewhat harsh and rude. Alyssa interrupted me. Her voice had regained that usual arrogance of hers. Maybe it's because she didn't want to look weak in front of Lena. What a perfect apology. Not walking the walk, are you? How clever of you to insist that I'm doing a bad thing and then do the same thing yourself. Lena switched to shouting uncontrollably. It wasn't very loud. You got it all wrong. I get what I've seen. Er, you see girls... You're arguing again, and I seem to be somehow involved in all that, but I don't understand a thing. Explain to him. Lena said to Alyssa with a grin. There's nothing to explain. Well, maybe you will... Well, maybe you'll let me try then. Whatever. She crossed her arms over her chest and turned away. Well then, Simeon. She blamed me for pursuing you. For a minute, there was complete silence. What? Lena didn't look like explaining any further, and as for me, I stood still trying to assemble the scattered pieces of the, of the puzzle in a whole. What do you mean? Exactly what I said. It's not like that. That's not what I meant. Interrupted Alyssa. Of course. You've always been like this. Lena burst into tears again. Wait, how come... So Lena likes me? And you, what about you? You're trying to convince me that it's all wrong while you're holding his hand. What? So Alyssa likes me too? What? <laughs> no, come on. Alyssa actually liking someone? This can't be happening. It's just that it's dark in here, and... That's so much like you. Always so arrogant, always trying to control others, but when it comes to yourself... Alyssa didn't answer. I really felt like I had to say something to defuse the situation. Hey, wait. Perhaps we just got... got it all wrong. I... This has nothing to do with you. Alyssa's voice was oddly distant. Judging by the conversation, this has everything to do with me. Yes, it does. Ask her what she thinks of you and why she told me not to go after you. I don't think Lena was actually going after me. We barely even talked. I'm telling you once again, I... We heard enough of your story already. Lena shot up and ran away into the darkness. I stood nailed to the spot, not sure what to do next. If I followed Lena now, what would I say when I found her? After all, I don't even understand what this is all about. My cluelessness and silly attempts to console her would only upset her more. 
Guess we better let her be alone for some time. That didn't sound very confident. Whatever. Without another word, Alyssa headed back to the boat. The whole way across the river to the pier was hell of a trip. I had to stop every ten or twenty meters to take a break. Alyssa was staring at the river and didn't pay any attention to me. Well, it seems to be the best situation here in the camp that is completely beyond my comprehension. Oh, the first one. Why am I saying the best? Even though ultimately it's just a trivial, everyday situation. I wasn't this confused even during the all-night expedition to the old camp. After all, if you have a closer look, there isn't anything strange here at all. Lena's very shy, perhaps even introverted, yet she's human and can't completely avoid human, hum normal human developments. Considering that, her reaction fits the situation quite well. Even if I don't get the source of the quarrel, it's clear as day that the girls won't won't behave like that if they didn't have a good reason. And as things were standing, I was that reason. And that's the strangest part of the whole situation. Hey, I'm sorry it went that way. If only I hadn't overheard your conversation. Seems like I was feeling a pathological need to excuse myself. It's not your fault at all, she said absentmindedly. It's just that you appeared in the right place at the right time and restarted a mechanism that had stood still for a long time. I don't quite get it. Of course you don't. And actually, you shouldn't right now. You'll get it later. She cast an intense glance at me. Damn it. Why does this always happen to me? Both at school and college. College. Both at school and college, trouble seemed to have chosen me as its primary target. Someone blocked the classroom's door with a mop. I got a written reprimand in my mark book. There was a fight. All things considered, I might have started it. Failed an exam? Well, of course, that's my fault, and the teacher who hates me has nothing to do with it. Even my parents always seem to prefer blaming me rather than the unfavorable, unfavorable circumstances, a third party's involvement, or the decrees of providence. At some point, I even started to believe that I somehow do attract trouble, maybe Murphy's Law. In my case, it was like, if something nasty is going to happen, it's going to happen to me. For that reason, I always try to stay out of any trouble where I could become the whipping boy. So, so I guess an example would be like, that's the, the, the meme where the dude's riding on his bike, sticks a, puts a stick into his own bicycle tire, falls over, and it's just like, Damn it, Simeon! <laughs> ah! It's all your fault. Thanks, Simeon. For that reason, I always try to stay out of any trouble where I could become the whipping boy. Well, judging by today, I'm not really good at it. It seems like you've got an aura of some sort. You do attract attention. Surprised I looked at Alyssa. She was smiling. Looks like she can read my mind. Trouble, mostly. Who knows, who knows? She said dreamily and stared at the river. It's a wonderful night, isn't it? Just like any other one, if you ask me. I felt used up. My arms are tired. I'm just tired in general. This is the second, not even the second time, this is the fourth time I had to row this boat. That's exactly what I'm thinking about. Just an ordinary night, nothing special. The best moment to make our most admirable camp leader really happy. She has to know that her favorite pioneer is a nasty pervert who who enjoys peeking at naked girls. While I do in fact agree that Semyon is a pervert and he could have walked away during the sink incident, I think also you were at the sink, and I don't know how many pioneers there are, but it seems like there's quite a few. The fact that no one else walked up it's just like you're lucky but also you're kind of just out there maybe you should have went to the bath instead of using the sinks hmm if you were gonna wash up that thoroughly something snapped inside of me again you aren't serious are you why of course i'm serious 
She didn't look like she was joking at all. Well, suit yourself, but do you really think that this is the best time to do that? Aren't you supposed to row? I realized that her boat's that her boat was still drifting in the river. Wait. Don't dodge my question. Let's get back to camp. I'll have a moment to think it over. Getting to spend an entire night in a boat that wasn't something I would aspire to, so I had to apply myself to the paddles. I give up, throw the paddles into the water, jump into the water, and try to swim away. I sink. We barely made it to the pier. I was exhausted, both because of the rowing and because of Alyssa's intent to tell Olga de Metrina about this morning's incident. If I knew our camp leader, her reaction would be quite predictable. So you're actually going to visit Olga de Metrina now, are you? Why not? She gave me her most roguish smile. It's night after all. She must be sleeping already. Who knows, she might, she might well be awake. Come on, you know full well it was a coincidence, a simple misunderstanding triggered by Ulyana. I just, I don't. Like, I want to give Alyssa a chance without feeling so irritated and angry, but she keeps doing these things that's just like, oh my god. I would not romance you at all, given the choice. I would avoid, like, the plague. No, I don't. She flung her arms up and headed to the camp. I gathered all my remaining strength, jumped up and followed her. At first I considered grabbing her arm, but then realized it might not be such a good idea after everything that had happened today. I should have went with my murder plan. This sucks. Hold on. I trudge... I trudge unenergetically un along next to her. Those are two words that are weirdly hard to say next to each other. Let's talk this over. Is there anything to discuss? We suddenly walked alongside each other for some time. At least she walked slowly so that I had no trouble keeping pace with her and I was thankful for it. Hey, is there anything I could do to convince you not to tell Olga, Olga Demetrina? Not sure, but, well, there is one thing. We came to the square. So what is it? Well, stop chasing Lena, for instance. For God's sakes, what makes her think I'm chasing Lena? I don't even talk to her. I started to lose my temper. Why are you making up such nonsense? You started that quarrel in the forest because... Because of you, we had to go to that island and here we go again. Enough is enough. I'm not chasing her. Alyssa stood still, bright moonlight lighting up her face which showed evident signs of resentment and displeasure. Why her, why, why her eyes red? Like I don't see how you look at her. How do I look at her? Was I wrong all this time? Was it really actually Alyssa? Who, who crazed? I mean, it could be both. Who knows? <laughs> like that. Like what? You know. Or not, never mind, I don't... <laughs> she shifted her gaze, but remained standing still. Hey, stop seeing everyone through your twisted imagination. If you can't stop making up nonsense stories, then at least keep them to yourself. Don't make others suffer because of you and your stories. I don't care if you pick on me, but now you got Lena involved. I really lost my temper for good, but Alyssa didn't answer. We sank into an unexpected s silence that was only broken by Alyssa's our sobs. From bad to worse, now you are crying. Have you all gone mad here? I clasped my hand in despair. What? Wait, what is he doing? Sometimes when they, like, it's, it's not just Everlasting Summer, but like other, other things I've read, sometimes they'll say 
actions and then it's like weird when you try to picture it. I can understand why Lena was crying, but seeing Alyssa crying is unthinkable to say the least. I can't even see her reasoning. At any other time I would definitely be shocked, but at this moment I'm too tired for that. My mind was absolutely blank. To be precise, it was so heavy and so full. It was so heavy and full that not even a single idea would have had the chance to dwell there. If I could compare my brain at its prime to a broad, broad highway full of speeding thoughts overtaking each other and causing giant chaotic crashes, now it's nothing but a forgotten tiny path in a distant desolate forest, which is why using, well, which is only used in times of absolute necessity. My mic is making this difficult <laughs> to read. Alyssa kept silent, at least she stopped crying. If you really think it's so serious, go ahead and tell everything to Olga Demetrina. I hope it makes you feel better. Okay, I won't do it. She said quietly and turned to me. The tears were all gone, but her face seemed to express absolute sorrow at the world. I'm just feeling hurt. What hurt you? I asked her tiredly. It's always like that. She gets all the attention and always pushes me aside. I had difficulty understanding what she was talking about and decided to play along. Hopefully she'd finally leave me alone. That's not true. You do draw attention and people don't overlook you. I don't. I raised my eyes and looked at her. Her facial expression was a mixture of amazement and expectation. See? So you... Could you... All of a sudden, her voice became so tender that I flinched in astonishment. I mean, I feel the same way. It's very- it's constantly disorienting or just, you know, it's really weird every time she gets, like, big ol' anime eyes. All of a sudden, her voice became so tender that I flinched in astonishment. Alyssa's face turned red and she hit her eyes. So... So, you really think that I'm as good as her? I wanted to say something, like, even better, but I stopped myself. Yeah, I do. It seems she didn't understand that I said it all absolutely and sincerely. Alright, time to sleep. Alyssa suddenly yelled cheerfully. This has given me some crazy whiplash. <laughs> Emotional whiplash. Now she was acting more like herself again. See you tomorrow. She waved her hand and ran away. I sighed in relief. Well, it was over for today. All my remaining energy was wasted on a sprint to Olga Demetrina's cabin. There was no light, so trying not to wake up the camp leader, I undressed quietly and lay down. Still interesting. What did Alyssa mean? And Lena? It's become totally unclear what is going on with them and with me, as we got sucked into some sort of vortex which started to swirl with furious power. But what's going to happen next? And where will I be thrown then? God, Alyssa popping up scared me. <laughs> I woke up early when Olga Demetrina was still asleep. I stretched and sat up in bed. If I felt surprisingly okay, I felt surprisingly okay, although I should have slept through the day after what happened the night before. Quietly, as to not wake up the camp leader, I took the bag with my washing up stuff and went outside. I forgot to look at the clock, but it seemed like six or seven in the morning. The camp was asleep. The grass was shaking off the night dew, a light fog hung above the ground, and the sun was just beginning to break through the treetops, not warm at all yet, like the fluorescent lamp in, in the house across from mine. I took a deep breath of the tasty cold air and thought that even a, nice, a night owl like me can enjoy waking up this early sometimes. The streets of the camp were empty, of course.
The water here has always been cold, but today it seemed like they got it from the Antarctic depths. Even my hands went numb from it. Finishing with my hygiene, I decided to walk around the camp a bit. Olga Demetrina is asleep. Breakfast is not for a while, so there's nothing to do. I came to the square and looked at Genda. That guy doesn't care if it's day or night, he's alert. I smiled at my successful joke and headed to the boat shed. Okay, step me in. As I walked, I hummed some song, absolutely sure I was the only one awake here. To my great surprise, I saw someone sitting at the pier hanging her feet in the water. Alyssa. I came closer and stopped, not sure what to say. Then she suddenly turned around and stared at me. Been standing here long? No. Why aren't you asleep? Why aren't you? She turned back and stared at the river again. Looks like I'm not the only one in a good mood today. At least she wasn't being sassy again. Can't sleep. I see. About yesterday? You get everything, right? What exactly? Oh, for God's sake. My answer didn't seem to go down well. Alright, I did. I lied. Alright, good. She suddenly looked straight in the She suddenly look looked me straight in the eye and smiled. In that case, I have plans for you tonight. Eh? May I ask what they are? You don't need to know. Well, since I'm part of them. You'll know when it's time. Can you give me a hint at least? Nope. She got up and walked towards me. A bit scared, I cleared the way. Wait a second. When I did a coloring for her eyes in the last thumbnail, I don't think her eyes were this red unless... I guess the picture that I used made it look more hazel than this weird, like, reddish-orange color. A bit scared, I cleared the way. Don't do anything stupid, Alyssa said, moving away from the boat shed. I wonder what she meant. And what are those plans? I had no wish to become a part of some terrorist act against a monument or anything. Besides, I was still haunted by yesterday's talk with Lena on the island. She's probably still angry. And I never managed to explain everything to her. Although I don't even know what I would say if I had the chance. I felt guilty about everything that had happened, but I couldn't figure out what exactly I was guilty of. The camp was starting to wake up. Breakfast was at least an hour away, but I had no desire to go back to the camp leader's cabin, so I decided to wait by the canteen. At least I'd be the first one there for once. I sat up on the steps and watched the sun rising. Sometimes it's great to just watch a new day come. I was overwhelmed with complete peace and tranquility. There was no thoughts to, t to tear up my brain as they usually do. I simply bathed in warm rays of the heaven star. In any other place and circumstances, I could probably even say I was happy. Good morning. You're early today. I looked up and saw Lena standing in front of me. She was smiling. You too. All of last night's events flashed before my eyes. Listen. If this is about yesterday, please don't. She interrupted me sharply. I don't know what came over me. It was all... Just forget it. She stared at me. Lena seemed much more confident than usual. If only it was all that simple. There's nothing complicated about this. She sat down next to me. So close I felt a bit awkward but made no attempt to move away from her. Sometimes I have disputes with Alyssa. Yeah, I realized. Man, is Alyssa gonna like see us talking with Lena and she's just gonna go 
hog wild. Yeah, I realized. I see. But in this case, it happened because of me. Who knows? She answered, lost in thought. What do you mean, who knows? So that's why. You know, I'm embarrassed. Perhaps I really am to blame. Or rather, I'm not trying to say that I'm not to blame, but... I was trying to explain myself like a fifth grader to a teacher. Okay, don't. As I said, nothing serious happened. If you think so. You should just think about how to act from now on. Not again. Covered my face with my hands, clearly showing that I had absolutely no idea what was going on here and that everything, to put it mildly, is very unpleasant for me. Could you express yourself any clearer? What for? She said evasively. Look, if I don't know what I did wrong, I can't do better. I can't decide on how to act, as you say. I think you'll understand. I would like to believe that as well, but... Oh, okay, it's just Olga. The canteen door suddenly flew open and Olga Demetrina came out. Sitting around hungry this early, she said playfully. Good morning, Lena said merrily. She got up and headed inside. Shall we? Yeah, sure. We were not done talking, but pioneers appeared out of nowhere and flooded the place by the time I got my... Oh, by the time I got my breakfast, Lena was already sitting, surrounded by Miku, Zenya, and Slavia. Sadly, there was no more free chairs at their table. Feeling down and de deliberately not saying hi to any anybody, I headed to my favorite place in the far corner of the canteen. I chewed my oatmeal, it really was chewy today, and washed it down with some cold tea, then I began to watch the others. All the pioneers seemed to be here. Some were chatting, some like electronic shurik were immersed in chewing, and some were gopping around like me. Gop? What? Gopping or gawking? Is gopping a word? Oh, it is. Informal British. Stare openly in a stupid or rude manner. I was just about to leave when Oleana jumped over to my table with her tray heaped with food. Bon Appetit! She blurted. Stealing again? I asked, openly staring at her tray. A growing body requires a lot of calories. Yeah, you really should grow up a bit. I whispered. What? I didn't think she heard me. Nothing. I headed out. Leaving so soon? She yelled at my back, disheartened. I gave no answer. I should have taken the washing up stuff back in. I don't want to carry it around all day. I feel like you just you could just say toiletries. Uh, that sounds like a better word to use than washing up stuff. Besides, what am I going to do today? Nothing at all came to mind. I was in such a bad mood that it seemed like someone was going to show up and invite me on a journey. You're kind of already on one. I left the camp leader's cabin and paused for a moment, then heard a voice calling out to me. Semyon. It was Slavia. Busy? No. Can you help me? Of course. I didn't want to look for answers on a wonderful day like this. A couple dozen hours wouldn't change my situation after all. What is it? You should stop by the cybernetics club. I don't know why exactly they'll... I don't know why exactly they'll tell you everything. The unfortunate inventors again. Alright. Thank you. She gave me a nice smile and ran off. So a journey to the enemy's lair lies ahead of me, to the lair of the evil Dr. Electronic and the diabolical Professor Shurik. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I pushed the door firmly and entered. Semyon? 
Electronics said a bit ominously, go. <laughs> Electronics said a bit ominously, glancing up from some contraption he had been poking with a screwdriver. Slavia sent me. I know. And? What? The second door opened and Shurik came in. Semyon. He greeted me in the same tone Electronic had. Well, I was last time I checked. I joked. So what do you need from me? We have an important task for you. I'm listening. The nurse came by yesterday. He stopped as if he, was, he wasn't he was going to continue. So... I asked carefully. So we have an important mission for you. I got that already. You... You were to deliver a package, sir. Can't you do that yourself? The infirmary is right over there. I said... S skeptically. We can't. Electronic said surprised. What a weird couple indeed. I see. Not another heavy bag, I hope. No, no, nothing like that. He smiled. All right, fine. I carefully agreed. Hold on. Shurik disappeared through the door and soon came back holding something wrapped in paper. Just be careful. Alright, alright. I took the package. If the pioneers weren't passing me the key to the pearly gates, it still looked like they were at least giving me the Olympic torch. Can I go? Of course. Electronics said threatening threateningly. Just be careful, Shirk pleaded. Immediately drops it. Outside, I took a good look at the package. They never told me not to open it, although it would make, although it would make sense to go further on. I quickly walked to the square and, making sure nobody was following, slipped into the forest. Gonna take a peek. Gonna take a peek. I just stood there for a while, indecisive, looking at the package. I wonder. What's in it? Why is it so important for them? Why couldn't they take it themselves? I had a lot of questions. I opened the package and saw a bottle of... What is that? Stolichnia. Stolichnia? I opened the package and saw a bottle of vodka. Well, so what? Pioneer's bringing a bottle of vodka to the nurse. Or rather, I'm doing it for them. Happens every day. I wrap the bottle back up and scratch my head. This isn't weird anymore, this is just stupid. So stupid I couldn't think of one intelligent theory. I stood there for a while longer and thought I shouldn't... I shouldn't let such a wonderful chance slip away. I quickly walk up to the camp leader's cabin. Well, you're just gonna tattle on my girl like that? Thank god Olga Demetrina was not there. I snuck inside and began to rifle through the contents of the table drawer. Oh, he's gonna drink it. Soon the vodka was in a soda bottle, while in its place was some water for the plants. Hell. Happy with my clever plan, I went out and skipped along the way to the infirmary. Seriously, what is so wrong about that? They almost got me into a trap. If the camp leader had seen me, if anyone else had, I could have managed myself. So it was absolutely nothing. I gathered all of my strength and knocked on the infirmary door. Hello, Pioneer. Hello. I have a package for you. A bottle of your armpit. I mean, a package for your cabinet. 
I was so euphoric I began to talk nonsense. Ah, she said. Hand it over. I handed her the package. The nurse stuffed it into the desk drawer without looking. You didn't open it, did you? No. I blurted out. Good boy. All right, so I'll be... Go, go, pioneer. I closed the door behind me and let out a sigh. I could always pin this on the crazy inventors, and in my situation I could really use even the most basic form of stress relief. I came to the square. The clock showed noon. That meant dinner was coming. I sat on the bench with the solid intention of not moving from here until the come and get it bell sound comes. Pioneers were running by. They were smiling and shouting merrily. Yes, the day was definitely a wonderful one. I glanced over the square and saw Lena approaching. 